Welcome. Welcome to our service this week. It's great to have you join us today. I'm delighted to have Di with me again, but we also have some other members of our congregations guest appearing with us in this service today. And I welcome Michael who's with us now at the beginning. So let us begin with our introduction and opening prayer. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing songs, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord. And we shall praise your name. Jesus, risen Lord, you are here and with us now. We thank you that you want to share in our lives and welcome you to our homes. May we seek to know you better and to love you more. Amen. Amen. Michael is now going to read our first Bible passage. The reading is taken from Acts chapter 17. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by art and the imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Michael. We're now going to have our first hymn. And today we're going to sing the Jubilate that we sing in Northwood Church in our morning prayer service.
Thank you to Teresa and Ian for their singing and playing and Aaron for his wonderful graphics. Di is now going to give us the gospel reading before we go straight to Steve for his sermon. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned, I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father. And I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hello. Before I begin, I just want to ask you a question. Do I look good in this shirt? <laughs> Sounds like a peculiar question to ask at the beginning of a sermon. But in my humble opinion, lots of people have been obsessed with image over the years. How they look personally, how lifestyle choices can put across a perceived air of grandeur whilst trying to avoid the deeper scrutiny. This focus upon image even extends to the garden. When I was a child, I still recall how the front garden always had to look very smart and grand, whereas the back garden was where the fun was had. The front being on display and the back, well, you can imagine. In our reading from Acts, we discover the Athenians were just the same. St. Paul had clearly wandered around the city and noticed the many statues that had been constructed, both in honour of those celebrated, but also to create a sense of magnificence. Athenians, amongst many others, worshipped many gods. They felt they constantly needed to one of the gods in order to gain their approval and therefore live a favoured and blessed life. Our modern day obsession with image isn't far from that of the Athenians thousands of years ago. Many people feel that if they present an image of prosperity and contentment, then that is what people will imagine their lives are like. Sadly, what often follows is a yearning to be like the other, rather than be the best of our true selves. Within the problem associated with image lies our spirituality, our sense of God, and even our relationship with God. Ever since the beginning of creation, people have sought a path to God and with a desire to enable people to share in their delight and a sense of the presence of God, they have extolled their way to God as the way to God. This also may well again enhance the impression of an individual's sense of importance in being seen as finding the way to God. And indeed, many people do follow in the paths of others, and do find God for themselves and therefore agree, and then proclaim this is indeed the way to God. And then a religion is born, a best practice in which to sense God. The problem is religion doesn't work for everybody because there isn't one sole way in which to find God. Having a true and living relationship with God is as unique as you are. 
In these times of trial, when we can feel far from organised religion, there is an opportunity to reevaluate our relationship with God. We can press the refresh button, as it were. On those happy Sundays, when we used to meet at church, and when restrictions are lifted, when we return to our church buildings, we came and will come together once more to worship God. Yes, our faith development will also be nurtured and encouraged, but only through our individual yearning for an increased awareness of God in our midst. During this time of lockdown, when we are far from what we class as normal, wouldn't it be wonderful if we discovered God in a new situation, in a new, more personal way? Because ultimately, as St. John alludes to so beautifully in his gospel, as we seek, so the spirit of truth opens our souls to the indwelling of God within us. And we find the peace and assurance that as humans we so keenly seek. And as we seek, we discover. And as we discover, we learn more about how the Holy Spirit is working both within us and within all of creation. Within these discoveries lie all that is good and holy. And as we become more aware, we begin to recognise the connections between God and all of creation, and the obsession with image dissipates. This is, of course, all part of the journey of life, the journey of self-discovery. The more we recognise God in our midst, the more content we feel, and the more we see God in our midst, and so on. It's all part of the circle of life, discovering, recognising and acknowledging. God is in everything that is holy, good and peaceful, and that includes you and me. The only limit to the presence of God is within our ability to sense God. My hope and indeed my prayer for us all is that during this difficult time, when we are separated from one another, is that we will seek and find new ways of connecting with God. And when we are out of this situation, we might be bold enough to share those ways with one another. That way we might begin to have a fresh conversation around faith and our relationship with God, but one that is without any positive limitations to it. Amen. I'm delighted to introduce Joe to say and sign our prayers today. Thank you, Joe. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for this day. Thank you for our homes, our possessions, our food, and the activities to occupy ourselves with. Thank you for all those who care for us, from our hospitals and staff, our emergency services, funeral directors, shops and their staff, to the family, friends and neighbours who support us in many ways. Protect these people, Lord, and keep them safe and well. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the countries all around the world. Guide them and support them with specialists who enable them to make good decisions regarding the coronavirus. The world's economy is an important worldly issue and we lift this whole situation to you, Lord, that you will shine your grace and your mercy upon us and help us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the physical, mental, spiritual and educational well-being of all peoples during this time of lockdown. Many people have not ventured out of their homes. Many people are mixing. 
Many people are relieved that our lockdown has been amended and many people are still very scared. Lord of peace, we ask you to come into our lives and guiding us, give us peace and reassurance in our lives, actions and the way ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks, Heavenly Father, for the bishops, archdeacons, clergy and lay people who continue to care, support and bless us with the online and offline services they have created. Continue to work in, through and with these wonderful people, keeping them and their loved ones safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you know each and every one of us intimately. However strong we may be, these are very unique, challenging times for all of us. Some of us may be managing well, some of us are coping okay, and some of us are struggling. Some of us can only view joy from afar, and some of us are having to grieve alone. You know who we are, loving God, and we ask you to wrap your everlasting arms of love comfort and care around each and every one of us. We bring these and all of these prayers together by saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Jo. That was fantastic. Thank you. Time now to come to the time of peace. Jesus said, love one another. As I have loved you, so you are to love one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. We now begin to draw our service to a close by welcoming Anthea to sing our final hymn, which is a wonderfully uplifting one. Not only does it have lots of alleluias in it, it also reminds us of the wonderful creation around us and all that we need to thank God for. Please join in as Anthea sings, or creatures of our God and King. Oh, 
Wonderful, Anthea. Thank you so much. Such a lovely hymn. I hope that carries with you all for the next few days. Thank you again to everyone who has been part of this service today. We hope you've enjoyed this time of worship and that this week is a blessed one for you, wherever you are and whatever you do. So Di will now lead us in a closing prayer. Eternal God, our beginning and our end, accompany us in this day's journey. Dawn on our darkness, open our eyes to praise you for your creation and to see the work you set before us today. Take us and use us to bring to others the new life you give in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. Take care, everyone. Goodbye for now. And God bless.